Okay, uh, I'm going to start my presentation. By the end of this presentation, we should all have our little online uh, store set up. So I want to ask, did everyone have the requirements? The requirements is for you to have your WordPress installed and to have a theme that's for WordPress and to also have the WooCommerce pay, uh, plugin downloaded. So if you don't have that, that's what we're going to do now. Just by a show of hand, who has all these three components? Okay, everyone else, we just have a little time. You have to make sure that you have a theme that supports WooCommerce. How do I normally get it? Is that I go to my uh, themes on my dashboard and I search for WooCommerce. And it's going to give me a number of themes that are adapted for WooCommerce. Otherwise, you can just download Storefront. That's the um, advised theme for WordPress. We all have our theme installed, and we all have uh, our dashboard open. Now we need to download the WooCommerce plugin. So if you know that you have the WooCommerce plugin, that's cool. You can just start running the setup wizard. So before we continue, by the end of my part of the presentation, we should be able to install and configure WooCommerce and be able to add a product and view it. So at this point, we're installing WooCommerce as a plugin and running the setup wizard. When you go to your plugins, you go to add new, and then you can search for WooCommerce. When you find it, you can then say install now. So once we have WooCommerce installed, we're going to run the setup wizard. If you already had WooCommerce installed before, then you can go to your settings, advanced, and then you check on health. You'll be able to run the setup wizard again. So we've installed WooCommerce. First step is going to ask us for location details. So we enter our country and we enter our address. And then we, we choose um, currency. Where it's written dollar there, we're going to choose the rent. And then we're going to say, um, I will also be selling products or services in person. So we have to tick that box. I will also be selling products and, or services in person. This is what's going to enable us to have the pay fast option in our next page. So on this page, make sure that you click on I will also be selling products or services in person. Okay, so our next uh, screen is where we select our options, our payment options. In our case, since we're going to be implementing the pay fast later, we're going to select to tick the box for pay fast. We're going to use pay fast as our, our payment uh, method. Personally, I haven't selected any offline payment. But if you feel like you want to use offline payments, such as bank transfers and all that, you can select that when you set up. But for me, I'm just selecting pay fast and then I press on continue. So here with the offline payments, I selected nothing because I don't want uh, to enable check payments or bank transfers or cash on delivery. I don't want to enable that. So my next screen is about shipping. So I have to decide how are my items weighed and how are they measured. So for the weights, I say kilograms. For the dimensions, I'm going to measure them in centimeters and not inches. And then we get to a page of recommended uh, apps that they want us to install. We select none of them. Like they're showing MailChimp, you deselect MailChimp. We deselect uh, any recommended uh, application, and then it gets to the activation page where we have to select if we want to continue with Jetpack. Then you go to the bottom of your screen and you click skip this step. You can, yeah, you can enter the email for the newsletter or you can leave it blank. At this point, we're actually going to start creating our product. So once we've gotten to this point, I'll just leave my email blank and I click on this button, create a product. Now that we started creating our product, 
we get to the product page, we can give it a name and give it a long description. And then we have to add some data that have to do with the, the product itself. We can, um, in, on the general tab there, we can enter the price. The regular price is your regular item price, and then the sale price is the price that is going to be there whenever your item is on sale. And next to this, you can see a link that says schedule, where you can decide when the sale starts and when it's gonna end. So here, I have an option to enable stock management at product level. If I don't click that, then the, the website is not gonna keep track of my stock online. So we're going to check that so that we are able to change our stock levels when someone buys online and everything. So we click, we, we select stock management, we enable it, and then we can put a, a stock quantity of our choice. There I put 20. And then we can decide if we allow back orders. If we allow back orders, then our stock can go to values that are less than zero because people will be allowed to make orders even when I don't have stock. And there's this other, there's this other uh, parameter here, sold individually. If I enable that, during one purchase, someone won't be able to order more than one of this item. So the moment I enable this, and someone comes up to buy stuff on my store, they will only be able to add one of this product, not two, not three, only one. In my case here, I don't want that, so I didn't uh, select this individual sale. The SKU, what does it mean? The business people, stock. Stop keeping unit, yes. It's the unique number that you give to your item. So it has to be it, a unique. No two products can share it. And it has to, you have to make sure that it doesn't match a post ID either. Because when a product is displayed on WordPress, it's going to use the, the ID of your item. So if it matches a post ID, then there's going to be a conflict. So your SKU has to be a unique number, alphanumeric value that you assign to your product here. And it must not match any um, ID of a post. So next, there are a lot of other things that you can add there, but because we don't have much time and I want you to actually do it on your own for a second product, I will uh, skip to the adding an image. On the right panel of your post, there's a place called product image. If you go to product image, you can then upload a product. Yes, you can set a product image. Once you've chosen your product image, you can also decide to put more images for that one product. And you do that with it's uh, written product gallery. If you have more than, if you want to have more than one image. So in your product gallery, you can go there and add another number of images that are linked to your product. Now you can publish your product, and then we're going to view it. When you go to your WordPress site, you can just click on the shop link, and we're going to have our product showing there. So if everything is fine, we should have our product showing there in our shop. What you can do now is to try and create another item, and we're going to link them together. We're going to use that linked articles tab. You can create a second product. Enter the details of your product, the general details, a name, a description, a price, a sale price if you want to. Okay, you do your inventory as well. And then we're going, there's a, a tab called linked products. You have to decide if this product can be linked to something else. So 
there's two uh, in bo uh, boxes there. There's upsells and then there's cross sales. Upsells is what you're going to recommend to your buyers to say that, oh, you looked at this, but you could actually go for this one. So if I put any product inside the upsell, it's going to recommend clients to look at that product because it might be better. And then the cross sales is what I recommend. You might also like this. So I can add products there to tell them that they might also like this. So we're going to try and uh, cross sell with the product we created before.